My dad's Cherokee, she said. Not who will I be. Of course, you need a few brain cells to know the difference, Isabel. Isabel widened her eyes in mock surprise, so that she looked like an owl with a makeup addiction. Oh, sorry, was your mom in this tribe? Oh, that's right, you never knew your mom. Piper charged her, but before a fight could start, Coach Hedge barked. Enough back there! Set a good example, or I'll break out my baseball bat! The group shuffled on to the next exhibit, but the girls kept calling out little comments to Piper. Good to be back on the res, one of them said in a sweet voice. Dad's probably too drunk to work, another said with a fake sympathy. That's why she turned klepto. Piper ignored them, but Jason was ready to punch them himself. He might not remember Piper, or even who he was, but he knew he hated mean kids. Leo caught his arm. Be cool. Piper doesn't like us fighting her battles. Besides, if those girls found out the truth about her dad, they'll all be blown down and screaming. We're not worthy. Why? What about her dad? Leo laughed in disbelief. <laughs> You're not kidding! You really don't remember that your girlfriend's dead? Look, I wish I did, but I don't even remember her, much less her dad. Leo whistled. <laughs> Whatever. We have to talk when we get back to the dorm. They reached the far end of the exhibit hall where some big glass doors led out to a terrace. All right, cupcakes, Coach Hedge announced. You're about to see the Grand Canyon. Try not to break it. The Skywalk can hold the weight of... 70 jumbled jets, so you featherweight should be safe out there. If possible, try to avoid pushing each other over the ledge, as that would cause me extra paperwork. The coach opened the doors, and they all stepped outside. The Grand Canyon spread out before them, live and in person. Extending over the edge was a horseshoe-shaped walkway made of glass, so you could see right through it. Man, Leo said, that's pretty wicked. Jason had to agree. Despite his amnesia and his feeling that he didn't belong here, he couldn't help feeling impressed. The canyon was bigger and wider than you could appreciate from a picture. They were up so high that birds circled below their feet. 500 feet down, a river snaked along the canyon floor. Banks of storm clouds had moved overhead while they'd been inside, casting shadows like angry faces across the cliffs. As far as Jason could see in any direction, red and gray ravines cut through the desert like some crazy god had taken a knife to it. Jason got a piercing pain be behind his eyes. Crazy gods. Where had he come up with that idea? He would felt like he'd gotten close to something important, something he should know about. He also got the unmistakable feeling that he was in danger. You all right? Leo asked. You're not going to throw up over the side, are you? Because I should have brought my camera. Jason grabbed the railing. He was shivering and sweaty, but it had nothing to do with heights. He blinked, and the pain behind his eyes subsided. I'm fine, he managed. Just a headache. Thunder rumbled overhead. A cold wind almost knocked him sideways. This can't be safe, Leo squinted at the clouds. Storm's right over us, but it's clear all the way around. Weird, huh? Jason looked up and saw that Leo was right. A dark circle of clouds had parked itself over the skywalk, but the rest of the sky in every direction was perfectly clear. Jason had a bad feeling about that. All right, cupcakes, Coach Head yelled. He frowned at the storm like it bothered him, too. We may have to cut this short, so get to work. Remember, complete sentences. The storm rumbled, and Jason's head began to hurt again. Not knowing why he did it, he reached into his jeans pocket and came out with a coin. A circle of gold the size of a half dollar, but thicker and more uneven. Stamped on one side was a picture of a battle axe. On the other was some guy's face wreathed with morals. The inscription said something like, Ivlius. Dang, is that gold? Leo asked. You've been holding out on me. Jason put the coin away, wondering how he'd come to have it, and why he had the feeling he was going to need it soon. It's nothing, he said. Just a coin. Leo shrugged. Maybe his mind had to keep moving as much as his hands. Come on, he said. Dare you to spit over the edge? They didn't try very hard on the worksheet. For one thing, Jason was too distracted by the storm and his own mixed-up feelings. For another thing, he didn't have any idea how to name three sedimentary strata you observe, or describe two examples of erosion. Leo was no help. He was too busy building a helicopter out of pipe cleaners. Check it out! He launched the copter. Jason figured it would plummet, but the pipe cleaner blades actually spun. The little copter made it halfway across the canyon before it lost momentum and spiraled into the void. How'd you do that? Jason asked. Leo shrugged. Would have been cooler if I had some rubber bands. 